is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Eating some chips. Uh, let's. <laughs> I gotta ask you about something here. And good morning, sir. Good morning uh, to you. You, we're watching uh, some dumbass baseball player do what Pete Rose did, except he has an interpreter. Right. Uh, then we're watching. To blame it on. Right. Exactly. I mean, that that shit is so fishy. It's just like it's it's like really, it's disgusting. Uh, and then in Toronto, we got some idiot that's uh, kind of like trying to you know fix his um, um, pr player props, you know, and mm -hmm. so obviously that dude needs to be banned from the damn league. What is college football doing now that there's a lot of money, NIL involved, and all of those kind of things? What are they doing to try to avoid any of this kind of stuff? Because I know that, like, uh, the NFL has those those uh, things that, like, if you play any of those games within the <clears throat> confines of the property, they, it can pick it up and all those kind of things. So. What are they doing? Because it's interesting now because, you know, there was always money in college football, but now it's wide open that there's big money involved for the players in college football. So having said that, a player could see one guy cashing in. He's not. Well, how else can I cash in? Right. You know, so I'm just wondering, what do you know about that? And what do you what do you hear? It's a great question, though, uh, you know, and a great topic. I think, you know, last year, people forget about this, but last year, Iowa State had a bunch of players suspended uh, for gambling. Their football program did, and, and it kind of disappeared after that a little bit. Iowa was another I think Iowa had uh, some players as well. So clearly he Sims, he Sims was working numbers there at Iowa he, State. He, he was. He was. Uh, look, Keith, I think and I love you, brother. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I think, I, look, I think it's something that's going to definitely infiltrate college sports more and more because, as you said, there's a lot of guys who are not making money in NIL, whereas their teammates are. You know, I got called in to help out with this story involving Temple basketball. Um, the Athletics started digging in on that. And, you know, there were some some sort of fishy reports coming out of Pennsylvania with Temple and their shooting percentages and their rebounding efforts and all kinds of stuff. So, Look, I think the NCAA is trying to talk to athletes about this. They do have sort of, I don't want to say symposiums, but they certainly have, you know, every school has sort of a guest speaker that comes in and talks about gambling and why you shouldn't do it. And, you know, the NCAA has their rules. But ultimately, this is just about whether or not you get caught, right? And, and I think all of these guys have a lot of different avenues, a lot of people around them that certainly could do gambling on their behalf, right? Or, or give them a percentage of whatever it is that they make on their own bet. So uh, it's something that is going to be monitored as we go forward. But I also think it's something that ultimately uh, it, it's too big of an animal right now, I think, for them to really police. Oh, and I think you're going to start to see, ultimately, it comes down to the casinos, right? And and, and their involvement and and, and what, what, what kind of, uh, you know, the betting apps, et cetera, how... how uh, how involved they're going to be in helping the NCAA out and get and passing along information and, and investigating this. I don't, I don't see this. This is big business for a lot of people. And ultimately uh, you know, it's, it's, it's only going to matter if you get caught. And I don't know that a lot of people are getting caught. And uh, well, no, I know. Uh, well, they don't get caught because they probably listen to Chris Carter, right? Just in case y'all not going to decide to do the right thing. <laughs> if y'all got a crew, you got to have a fall guy in the crew. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to have that fall guy. So, and if it's not going to be Lee Majors, you're going to have to pick somebody else, you know? So, it is uh, youngins, you have no idea what <laughs> I they just They have no said. idea what you talked about. They think you're talking about the new movie that's coming out, by the way. That's what they're thinking about, the I remake. Have to, you have <laughs> no idea what I just said. But anyways, it is what it is. No, because... Uh, all this crap going on and, you know, the Otani thing smells to hell. I mean, bro, this is right. I, I, and I, something's going to happen because there's going to be some independent investigating. Something's going to go on here with this Otani thing because it smells, dude. And he's the most important player in the damn sport. So it's like they're going to do everything to cover this shit up, bro. 
Absolutely. Baseball needs all the help it can get. And, and this is the kind of press that does not help baseball whatsoever uh, to have their superstar, uh, be the best player in the game, hands down. Right. It's not even uh, oh, same conversation. Coach. It's not even no, no. close. And you and I have never seen this. <laughs> we have never seen it. It's not a young thing. It's, it's right. an all timer thing, bro. Right. Not, not even you have to go back and really look at Babe Ruth's stuff. Oh, yeah. no, Babe Ruth did it. No, actually, no, he did not. The more he batted, the less he pitched. As he right. became a, a full-time batter, they phased him out of pitching, actually. So he's never – he's never – nobody's ever done what this guy's done. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody can do what he's ever done, actually. It's not what, what they've ever done. It's nobody can do what he's done. And so it's so freakish that, yeah, he's so important. Brother, they're, they're – they're out there in the far east because this is a guy that's going to help you grow that damn game by taking it, you know, to the far east. And, absolutely. Yeah, make it even bigger. Because let's put let's be honest, baseball's done growing in the United States. Yeah, it's really it's really sad uh, how much the sport has really declined. I mean, that was my sport growing up here in South Florida and playing it at the parks and and uh, but to see you know the way football and basketball and every other every other sport has sort of taken off here uh, in the last twenty or so years. Uh, to see how far baseball's falling behind, this is something you certainly can't afford. Bringing bringing back the whole, uh, you know, gambling thing to to uh, college sports in the NCAA. Oh, as somebody who covered high schools down here for a long time oh, in yeah. Miami, I mean, do you think about the the amount of gambling that just went on with high school games? You know, the times that I, you know, I would I would quote unquote set the line right every week. I would make my high school picks for for the high school football games, and I got to tell you, oh, there were times when when people wanted to assault me after the game because I picked. Northwestern to win by 20 points and they only won by 10 or something, you know, and, and that's, that's the kind of craziness. And it was coaches on the sideline, by the way, it was, this wasn't like, this is coaches probably gambling yeah. on their own teams, um, you know, asking me why such a line. Or you're putting some expectations out there. The kids right. read it, they get fat headed, the others get motivated. So yeah, that it's all the other shit that's tied to your prediction that right. gets into their crawl. So I can understand right. Right. And then and then the people gambling it literally in the stands, you see the money exchanging and the and the you know, I mean, it's it's crazy. So do I expect it to, to happen in college sports? Absolutely. I think it certainly will creep in with NIL. Yeah, I know. It's, it's interesting. Maybe that's an article to find out what they're doing to prevent that. Yeah, because yeah. that's um, it's a pro it's a growing problem. Obviously, it's something that yeah. we thought athletes understood it was taboo. Right. But it's just happening way well, too there's much. Just, now, there's just know? less and less fear of the NCAA. There's just less and less fear, right? Like, I mean, all these rules keep, you know, they keep getting shot down. So uh, it's just more and more freedoms. And, you know, as they say, the Wild West. All right. So uh, Pringles chips are pretty good. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about Gerard Pringle. Yeah, one of the fastest, uh, you know, play high school seniors to be in the country out of uh, Sefner Armwood. I think ran a 10.56 in the 100 uh, meter dash. One, I think it's the fourth fastest time among all the people in the uh, high school football recruiting database for this cycle coming up. So, you know, uh, Miami wants to get more explosive players. Uh, Pringle ran for 1,600 yards, so he's, you know, he's a tough back. Saw a lot of nine-man front, still ran for 1,600 yards. So, you know, uh, Mario's recruiting may, continues to be at an elite level. He's not going to stop uh, going after superstars, and that's how ultimately Miami gets back to being Miami. Uh, you know, people can talk about, well, they've had talent, they've disappointed. Yes, but they also haven't had this much talent uh, on their roster in a few in a few years, and I think little by little, you know, you stack – uh, running backs who can who can run 10-5 in, in the 100-yard uh, dash, 100-meter dash, you're going to get better. So uh, good pickup for them, but they got to hold on to them now. This is it's one of those things. I told you this last week on the show. I said this is the, the right. point where we're going to start to see more commitments, but the, the real question is do they sign in early December? Right. Uh, and, by the way, was there any truth that Mike McDaniel was trying to borrow him at times? Because you know, <laughs> His kind of guy for sure. His, his kind of guy for sure. Uh, yeah, but you know, the Pringle kid is, is interesting. Somebody asked me if his father, uh, played in the Canadian football. I got to find out the, the story with him. And, and Oh, you know. there was, yes, right. yes, dude. He was one of the best returners Yep. in, in the CFL, the Pringle guy. Yes. I remember him in fact, and I don't follow the CFL, but I, you know, you read enough, you end up running into headlines and they kind of stay in there. And I remember, I remember a Pringle 
tearing it up back in the day. In fact, he might have been right around the time of Jonathan Avery. How about that? I think Avery, oh, look, Manny froze. There we go. Is he unfreezing yet? Is Has he unfrozen? Frozen in time. Manny Navarro. Look at him. It's just he's staring. See, that's it. Like, he can't really do that in real life. Just stare like that without blinking. See, that's the kind of face that wins in a poker match right there. You can't read it. You don't know what's going on. What kind of a hand does he have? Does he have a full house? Does he have nothing? Just a pair of sixes? You know, that kind of stuff. Look at that. In fact, he signed on on another window so we can unfreeze. Look at that. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened. but the I don't know. But we still, that fast. We still have a frozen window there. Like you would at his frozen window. Let's talk to Manny with Manny. <laughs> okay. See, yeah. Oh, it disappeared. Oh, damn it. We had it for a moment there. Oh, oh. <laughs> what happened, Sean? Why did it disappear? Uh, I don't know. It dropped finally. Finally dropped. Yeah. His name is Michael A. Pringle. Michael, Michael. Pringle. Mike Pringle for the Canadian Football League. Right. Um, and and he played. Uh, in the NFL, you signed twice. It doesn't say anything about kids or anything. Yeah, I, I got to get to the bottom so of it, whether or not. It does you know, say he, that he owns the Max Muscle thing now, so I don't know what that is. Well, okay. he's uh, – I know he went to school in California, and uh, I think oh, you know, this that's kid that's where is, he is. He's in Los Angeles. Yeah, so maybe maybe he's related to him somehow. Maybe it's an uncle, cousin, who knows. Was, was, wasn't he a great returner in the CFL? Yeah. Is yeah. that what it was, uh, Sean? A lot of, a lot of speed. Great running back. Wait a minute. I, I can't hear you, Sean. Can't hear oh, you. I'm coming in right now. Just come in. Okay, there you go. Um, he was <laughs> voted uh, number four in the CFL's top 50 players of the league's modern era by Canadian Sports Network. Yeah, I remember him. I remember him. And I, I, I want to say that he played in the same era with Jonathan Avery, with John Avery okay. from here. The, right. the failed Dolphin draft pick. Right. He actually went to Canada and actually had a decent career and was a good returner there and all that. And I think Pringle and him p played like in the same era of that. Jonathan Avery. Yeah, that was one of the trip. many great picks by the Dolphins, huh? Yeah, no, Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jonathan Avery. Yeah, he picked uh, <laughs> Avery. And uh, and I remember Avery would have multi-flavored Kool-Aids in his in his locker room. Right. And he would get a jug of water and then load it up with a bunch of Kool-Aid. And we'd ask him, he goes, it's the only way I can stay up in meetings. And so, <laughs> so, you know, after 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 locker rooms at that right. time, they would go into a meeting after that. And sure enough, you'd see John Avery walk in with a big old jug of water. And then he'd pick a different flavor out of his locker room and he'd load it up so he can have that sugar the entire time. Because <laughs> if not, Jimmy would have his ass if obviously he fell asleep. You know what those, I mean? Those pre Red Bull days, huh? Yeah, pre right. Pre Red Bull <laughs> days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, need the, you need the real sugar before the Red Bull stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah crazy stuff. All right. What else you got going on in the uh, athletics so folks can check you out? Yeah, we're going to have the, those all Florida and uh, all Georgia teams for recruiting uh, in the modern era coming out soon. My editor was finishing it up the, this weekend, uh, so that'll be coming out soon. And I'm going to be going to Miami on Thursday to go watch uh, some of the Canes practice. I'll do like a little mid-camp report. Uh, people, you know, want information constantly on what's happening out there. And it's like, dude. They're just practicing. Like it's show you anything. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, other than seeing Cam Ward throw the ball, which it looks great when he throws the ball, uh, you know, you just look at the roster and you say, well, there's a lot of important key guys out that are ha that had surgery or that are coming off injury. And then, uh, you know, there's a bunch of freshmen that aren't going to probably play. You know, that, that's what you're watching. You're watching uh, the future, essentially. So uh, but I will say this for the Miami fans um, and the college football fans in general, I think. April 15th, that new uh, window, get ready. There's going to be a lot of movement, player movement in college football. Uh, guys that could be good players leaving Miami or coming to Miami or Florida State or whatever, you're going to see a lot of a, a lot of player movement. And it's just the, the way uh, college football is now. Uh, you have these two, these two windows. 
is there a position we as Canes fans should be looking at that they might be going after? Well, I think I think certainly somewhere in the sake in the secondary, you know, after losing Cam Kitchens and James Williams, I think safety is a position that you could see them address. I think running back, uh, you know, they had uh, one of their guys leave in the middle of camp, right? They're leading rusher the last two years, Henry Parrish. I think running back, and if there's an experienced running back who becomes available, you know, the way Mario looks at it, uh, and, and for, for the fans who get disappointed with this, right, and see players leave and go, and, hey, this guy just got here. They just recruited him. Or, hey, this guy just transferred in last year. Uh, what I would tell you is Mario's not trying to just build the roster up. He's trying to win a championship. He's trying to to, to make a championship roster. And, and the easiest way to do that is best the best players in the portal. And if they become available and Miami can buy them <laughs> and get them to come here, uh, that's something he's going to explore. And so I think you're going to see a lot of player movement uh, in the in the second, third week of April. All right. There you go. Follow him on Twitter. And Manny underscore Navarro, and make sure you subscribe to The Athletic. Manny, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you. All right, brother. Good talking to you. Take care. You got it. All right. Don't forget, folks, Caneswear. If you go personally to 2655 South University Drive in Davie, you can use our code BIG010. You will get 10% off. And if you go online, well, you can, if you order over $99, you'll get free shipping. And you use our code BIG010, you will get 10% off at Caneswear dot com.